competition between the two. Yes, stations. that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Some yeah. So there'd be a yeah exactly yeah. Okay. All right. Now. Um, so the question is, is whether this is all there is to it, okay? Um, uh, uh, is there anything else that could happen? And um, so this is where, um, uh, oh, actually, so, so, so let me just uh, say one more thing, which is, um, so uh, uh, the interesting thing is what happens at the interface between these two, okay? Um, and so, uh, uh, and, and at the interface between uh, these, you get uh, edge states. And we can understand these edge states in just the same way that we understood the, um, the uh, domain wall state in the Sushri for Heger model. Okay? So, uh, so if we have a, uh, a boundary between n equals 1 and n equals 0, I can think of that as a boundary between, um, between this and this, where I just change the sign of the mass term at one of the k points. Okay? Um, and so, uh, uh, so, so, um, uh, so at one of the k points, you know, on this side I have the masses are opposite each other, and on this side the masses are equal to each other. And um, so you can solve this in exactly the same way that we did the Sushri for Heger model, where where now um, what I can do is for every, you know, I can look at the eigenstates of k y, you know, the eigenstates. Uh, which are plane waves going in the y direction, and for each value of ky, I just have a uh, you know uh, you know one-dimensional domain wall problem. It has exactly the same uh, solution, and um, so the uh, the zero-mode state that you get then turns into this um, this chiral Dirac fermion uh, mode um, that has a, uh, a uniform uh, velocity. And I guess I should have written down here. So so this zero-mode that you get is um, is going to be um, a eigenstate of uh, sigma y, basically. Okay, so when you solve for the zero mode as a function of, of x, um, that zero mode is an eigenstate of sigma y, and so therefore you can see that its energy is just going to be uh, linear in ky. Okay, so these edge states are, are sort of wonderful and magical because they only go in one direction. Okay, and um, so they're sort of like one-way, one-way streets, and um, and so uh, so so this is uh, very interesting because if you put in an electron here, it has basically has no choice um, but to go forward, so that you know with 100% certainty it's going to come out the other end. So it has perfect transmission, and that perfect transmission um, allows you to measure the quantized transport in the quantum Hall state you know, to incredible one part in a billion accuracy. Okay? Okay. So, um, so, uh, so this, is, uh, this is important. Now, now, an important thing is that, uh, you know, having a mode like this is something that, um, that can't happen in a purely one-dimensional system. Okay? And, and so there's this theorem called the Fermion doubling theorem, which, um, which was once explained to me as simply the fact that what goes up must come down. Um, so, uh, so if you had a one-dimensional band structure, and, 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 the, and you know, so then it's going to be defined on a circle. So if you have a band that comes up, it has to connect back to itself, so it has to come back down. Okay, so, 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 um, so in a purely one-dimensional system, you have to, the, the, uh, the chiral fermions have to come in pairs. And so what the quantum Hall effect accomplishes is spatially separating the right movers and the left movers. It puts the right movers on the top edge, and then on the other edge the le are the left movers. Okay, so it speci spatially uh, separates them. Okay. All right. All right, so um, I think maybe I'll skip this. So, so uh, uh, now, um, so what I want to do now is I want to ask whether there's anything else that could happen in graphene. Okay, and so this gives us something interesting uh, conceptually. And so let me sort of summarize the way we uh, thought about this, which is that um, so so uh, and now I'm going to remember that the electrons um, actually come in two flavors: spin up and spin down. Okay, and so um, so uh, so the important thing is we had these uh, these Dirac points where there are two valleys at k and minus k, 
And then I have this sublattice sigma index, and then S is the spin. So, so when I had a trivial uh, insulator, that gave me a mass term, which was sort of the same at kx and ky. And it's also the same for all the uh, um, spins. And, and this mass term breaks uh, inversion symmetry. Okay. Likewise, I could do the Haldane uh, mass term, which um, gives me a mass term, which again is independent of the spin, but um, has opposite signs at the uh, k and k prime point. Okay. And so the problem is both of these break a symmetry that, that graphene has, and so, uh, so real graphene shouldn't be in either of these two states. Okay. But um, uh, it turns out that if you have a mass term which looks like this, so it's just like the Haldane mass term, but with opposite signs for the up and down spins, then this respects all of the spin symmetries that graphene has. Okay, so um, uh, because um, the problem with this one is that um, under time reversal symmetry, it was um, odd. Okay, like a, it, you know, it's like a magnetic field. It's odd under time reversal. But you see, the thing is, is that under time reversal, the spin, up spin goes to the down spin. And so that, uh, putting the spin in here, fixes that. Okay? So in principle, this, uh, this now this in, involves an interaction between the sort of orbital degrees of freedom of the electron and the spin degrees of freedom. And so it requires a spin orbit uh, interaction. But, in this, th but this interaction should, in, in principle, open up an energy gap. Okay, so when I first thought about this, I thought, ah, I've discovered that graphene is actually an insulator. Okay, um, uh, now the problem with this argument is this, this is an argument based on symmetry, and symmetry arguments are wonderful because you can know that they're right. Um, but what they don't tell you is they don't tell you how big an effect is. Okay, and the problem is, is that this spin orbit potential in graphene is, is puny. But, um, but, uh, but nonetheless, um, uh, it's something interesting to think about because what it tells us is that we have an energy gap but it's really just two copies of the Haldane model, okay? One for the upspins and one for the downspins, okay? Because, because this mass term is just SZ, it's just the upspins have this with a plus sign, the downspins have this with a minus sign, okay? And so that means that the up and down spins independently are in integer quantum Hall states, okay? And so we have an energy gap, um, uh, um, but we have to have chiral edge states. Okay, and these chiral edge states um, uh, are something interesting because the upspins are going one direction and the downspins are going the other direction. Okay, and so we now call these um, uh, edge states where the direction of motion is correlated with the spin. We call them helical uh, edge states. Okay, and, and so these are also something which is um, very special. Now, they're not quite as special as the um, as the quantum Hall state, the chiral edge states. Okay, remember the chiral edge states. Um, you know, you had no choice but to go forward. So these edge states, you you can go backwards. Okay, um, but uh, there's a sense in which they are protected, which I'm going to describe, which these are protected by time reversal symmetry. Okay, and really there's a sense in which these edge states form half of an ordinary one-dimensional electron system. So an ordinary one-dimensional electron system with spin, it has up, you know, up and down spins going to the left and up and down spins going to the right. Um, this one is only half of that. Okay, so let me say a few words about time reversal symmetry because this is really uh, something which uh, uh, is important. I want to make sure uh, everybody is uh, on board with. So uh, uh, time reversal symmetry is, is, is a kind of um, uh, not your usual kind of symmetry. Um, uh, that you learn about in beginning quantum mechanics. Okay, so usually you think a symmetry is a unitary operator. This is so, so time reversal symmetry is an operator which, um, uh, uh, in addition to doing some unitary operation, it takes the complex conjugate of the wave function. Okay, and um, so so it's an anti-unitary uh, 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 operator. Okay, um, and um, uh, uh, so it does two things. It, um, it takes the complex conjugate of the wave function. It also flips the spins, OK? Because the spins are sort of like tops. They, they, they change sign under, under time reversal, OK? And, um, and it has an, a very important uh, property, which is this uh, minus sign here, OK? So which means that if you do time reversal twice, it squares to uh, minus 1. Now, this minus 1 here is, is it's really the same minus sign um, 
that you get when you, if you take a, a spin a half and you rotate it by 360 degrees. Okay, this this minus sign is the same is the same the same minus sign. Okay, so um, so but this minus sign has a very important consequence, um, which. Uh, you know, when I first learned it, I thought it was completely trivial, but now I realize it's not as trivial as I thought. It, it, and and the, the, the consequence is uh, Kramer's theorem, which says that um, if you have a spin a half uh, system that, and you have time reversal symmetry, then every eigenstate is at least twofold degenerate. Okay, and so the reason I, I thought it was trivial when I first learned it is because I, you know, because when I first learned quantum mechanics, I never thought about the spin orbit interaction. So that means if you have a state, you can put an up spin in it or you can put a down spin in it, and those two states are degenerate. Okay, so Kramer's theorem just says you can either put an up spin or a down spin. Where Kramer's theorem becomes non-trivial, uh, non, uh, though, is when you have an interaction between the um, uh, the spin and orbital degrees of freedom, so I can't think about the spin independently of the orbital state that I'm putting it in. Um, but it's still true. And so let me just uh, 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 show you how we know it is still true. So, so imagine that um, you have a state, okay, and I can then the time reversal of it, you know, I have an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. I have the, the time reverse of that eigenstate, um, you know, is, you know, uh, you know, some state. And if, so if I do time reversal twice, then um, the, the point is um, it takes the complex conjugate and, um, uh, you know, so that gives me c squared, which cannot be equal to minus one. Okay, and so what this means is that uh, the time reverse of this state cannot be equal to itself. Okay, so I cannot have, so if I, if I had a singly degenerate state um, that was an eigenstate, then the time it would have to be its own time reverse. Okay, so so that's impossible. So when theta squared is equal to minus one. Okay, and so so the consequence of this is that for these edge states is that so notice that um, uh, that these edge states they uh, they cross each other. Okay, and so your first thought. You know, when I, again, when I first learned quantum mechanics, the one of the things I learned is that if you have a degeneracy, degeneracies never happen by accident, okay? Um, so uh, uh, if you have a degeneracy, then if I just do a small perturbation, then that degeneracy should be lifted, and then uh, there should be a little gap that opens up here, and then there's nothing, then, then there's nothing left, okay? Um, but uh, what uh, time reversal theorem uh, tells us is that the two states that are crossing actually um, uh, form a Kramer's pair. Okay, so um, uh, th so they're crossing um, uh, at this uh, corner of uh, at this edge of the Brillouin zone where k where k and minus k are the same point. So these two crossing states are in fact a Kramer's pair. Okay, and um, so what that means is that um, as long as you keep time reversal symmetry, there's nothing you can do to open up this uh, energy gap. Okay, so the crossing is protected um, even if the conservation of spin is violated. Okay, so even if spin itself is not a good quantum number, if you have a spin orbit uh, interaction, um, then this crossing is still uh, protected. Yes? Yes. But I can consider other models where I take out time symmetry, but I put in another symmetry that gives me degenerate point states at the uh, symmetry protected points. My question is, is that a general statement that if I have just a symmetry that gives me this, sort of, this type of degeneracy at a symmetry protected point, I can have these sorts of edge states? Well, I mean, like, is there not, something special about time reversal, or can it be another symmetry? Sure, you can have other symmetries that protect things. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, and that is true. So the thing that's special about time reversal symmetry is that it's not a spatial symmetry. So that um, uh, you can have disorder and still have time reversal symmetry. Okay? Um, and so that makes it more robust in terms of describing physical physical systems. So if you have other spatial symmetry, like a reflection symmetry, so you can have, you can have uh, degeneracies which are protected by a reflection symmetry. And this is actually something that people are currently talking about a lot um, uh, with uh, topological crystalline 
insulators. Okay, they have edge states that are protected by, um, that, that rely on a reflection symmetry. Um, and, uh, but if you make them dirty, then they are less, then, then the, then, you know, disorder, uh, uh, violates the reflection symmetry. You know, you, you're never going to have reflection symmetric disorder. Okay, so um, at least if you did, that would be very artificial. So, so that's 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 the sense in which time reversal is more robust. Yeah. Yes. Well, so I use the fact that the spin is an odd integer one half. So, so you know the the, the, the the minus sign that you get when you rotate a spin a spin by a half is it's 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 a, if it's a half integer you get a minus sign. If it's an integer spin you get a plus sign. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so. Uh, yeah, so if you, uh, so if you square it, um, if you square this, then I think you end up with a 2 pi rotation about SY. Yeah. 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 So, you know, so if I write this down, then uh, I can, you know, I can write the, uh, uh, the time reversal operator as complex conjugation and then some rotation of the spin. And, uh, you know, yeah. A Kramer's pair is the two degenerate states. Individually, or is it a linear combination of them? No, no, it's a, well, it's, it's, a, it's a pair of states, right, which are, which are the time reverses of each other. Okay, for the entire band structure. No, 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 it's just these two states. It's just for one, it's, it's only for the, you see, you see um, uh, uh, in the band structure, time reversal takes k to minus k. So it only makes sense to talk about Kramer's theorem at the values where k and minus k are the same point. You see, because the Kramer's, so, so if, if I have a, a non-zero value of k, oh, great, thank you. If I have a non-zero value of, oh, not, um, if I have a non-zero value of k, then its partner, its Kramer's partner is at minus k. Okay, so, so, so in general, at, at a non-zero value of k, the states don't have to be Degenerate because because you have a degen the degenerate state is at minus k. But if you're at k equals zero, then zero is equal to minus zero. So that means the Kramer's partner has to be at the same momentum. Okay, and so that means the two the two states at that momentum have to be degenerate, and they that they form a Kramer's pair. So I guess yeah. So so you have a Kramer's pair at non-zero k, but then it's going to be k and minus k. Now there's another point at the um, edge of the Brillouin zone, k equals pi which is also equal to minus pi, okay? And so that's, that's important. Great, thank you. Okay, so, um, right. And so, so this uh, fact uh, actually makes these edge states um, uh, sort of more robust than you might think because um, it, it prevents the backscattering of electrons in these, uh, in these edge states, at least by elastic uh, backscattering, okay? And, um, uh, and um, another uh, 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 feature that this gives, so in a usual, in a one-dimensional um, uh, system, um, if you make it a little bit disordered, then it will be unstable to Anderson localization, okay? And, um, so, that's, and, and so, so one-dimensional uh, electron systems are, are, are unstable. This um, uh, is sort of a one-dimensional system on the edge here, and it is able to evade um, Anderson uh, localization because, um, because of this absence of, uh, of elastic backscattering. And, so, and even for strong disorder, um, uh, uh, I think I, I will be able to convince you that uh, this cannot be localized e even if you have strong disorder. Okay. Okay. Pardon? Sure, there can be a further accidental degeneracies. Or, or if you have other symmetries, there could be other symmetries which, which make the degeneracy higher. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, could you speak a little bit louder? I couldn't hear. Well, okay, yeah. So, so um, let me wait until the next uh, view graph to try to explain to explain, so, so in general, if you make, if you have a disordered system, 
then you can have localized, then your states can be localized. You can imagine, is, you know, if you have a really big disorder, then there's going to be like the bottom, the lowest energy is going to, is, you know, you're going to have a localized state there. And the, and the, the theorem is that in one dimension, you know, no matter how weak the disorder in an ordinary one dimensional system, no